Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, September 17th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that would make me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 711, which, yes, we talked about 711 last month, but different reasons. Uh, but uh, there was somebody who was doing a report when he was heading to camp and probably did some selfies. Tony, a.k.a. comes in. Yay! Hey there. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. You look Happy refreshed. Yes. So Two how were the rollers? We'll do that. Oh, the rollers were great. Uh, I, I think it was the hamburger uh, and then the regular taco one. Uh, I'd have to go back through my notes on which flavors? Uh, you know, it's funny. I got highly disappointed as a sidebar since we decided to bring that up uh, <laughs> because I had to travel for work. I stopped in a truck stop and was mad at myself because I knew better. I'd been to this truck stop before. And yet again, this truck stop did not have roller bites. <gasps> what time are you there? On a roller? No, no, no. They don't even have the machine. Oh, oh. It's because they have a. It's because it's an old, an old style truck stop with an actual sit down restaurant. Mm. So like they have like some hot prepared like stuff in boxes, like cardboard box, like stuff that's under a heat lamp type deal, and that's it. Everything else is refrigerated or like room temperature, like snacks or whatever. And I forgot because I was like, because it's one of those things like there's only so many stops in this stretch of the highway, and I was like, oh right, I've stopped here for gas, and I stopped it as soon as I walked in. I looked around, I was like. Fuck. That's <laughs> like, this is not a place to stop. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah, sadly, on my way back, I did not stop for rollers. I was just on the way up there. So if you find folks are interested in that, you should go back and listen to episode 708 for uh, Jeff's birthday show that we did this year. Yep. Uh, the Buffalo mozzarella roller was okay. Pretty basic, but as crispy as a roller could be. The pizza-ish roller was just a bland pizza, but the kids would love it. And the taquito-ish rollers were amazing. They always are. <laughs> to read the telegram report, there was a hopefully round two coming up, but you never got round two as far as I saw. Yeah, we got distracted. Sorry. Okay. Extracted? More like no. distracted. Ah, yep. There we are. You know what? So, speaking of dick, uh, let's talk about this Let's talk about sex. but in the most interesting sort of way i would almost want to say that the that our title is clickbaity but it's all true isn't it gary <laughs> well yes like so this is technically the lead-in to the sexy time uh, or well, could be what helps initiate the sexy time. Maybe. Even I mean, that, advertising that, your milkshake. <laughs> amongst other things. <laughs> um, yeah, so this time around, uh, Tony's back to talk with us. This time, instead of let's talk about kink, it's to talk about sex. Um, this comes about from a recent <laughs> episode. I think we were, um, doing our, was it the month of August show? And we were like, you know, we, we pick things from Twitter, uh, you know, posts that we like or whatever. 
I think that's where this came from. Anyways, couldn't help but make a comment about the background of one of the of the people who had taken a selfie. And I was like, you know what? Like, we haven't done an episode about how to take better selfies. Because I don't know why it's 2023, people. Yes, it is a problem that technology has advanced because now the cameras are better. The equipment's better. And so your backgrounds, like your images are high resolution now. You can take things and landscape. <laughs> yes. And you could also like blow up an image and make it a lot bigger and still have definition, which means now I can see things clearer because this isn't like the old days where everything was just kind of glossy or fuzzy or whatever. Wait a minute. Oh, come on. Does you don't want to go back 20 testicles? years ago. <laughs> I mean, you can go back to the early days of internet dating and have your 320 by 200 image uh, little which, thumbnail. Which, right, I was going to say, which now people are like, that's just a thumbnail. It's like, that's not even <laughs> really an image. And you're like, hmm, let me take it. Let me try to take a look at that. Zoom in so, and Yeah, so it was one of these like kind of goofy things that I was like, you know what? Uh, we should have a, a person on and like who is not uh, afraid to have an opinion and maybe provide some insight uh, on the concept of like how you can take better selfies. Um, and this isn't so much about like helping you take pictures to get more attention. I mean, if that's a byproduct, I think that's good. But honestly, this is just mostly about like the most common tropes that we see of people taking selfies and things that you could probably do if you think about it for a moment to, no, no, just make it a better picture, you know, because now that, that everybody has the capability, we all have these computers in our hands that we carry around with us that we call cell phones. So, you know, and if you have one that's within the past like four years of issue, there's there's a lot of, of technology in here that can help you in several ways. Um, and that's kind of what this is. This is that's what this is about a little bit, um, because the reality is having taking a selfie is having an online presence. <laughs> are you, what are you doing? <laughs> <A selfie. laughs> um, so the, the thing of it is, is that uh, I guess we'll start with with this part first um because I, I think there are some common backgrounds that people take selfies in and there's so just some general things that you can do within these spaces um to consider or think about without having to like take a photography course or you know consider that and yet at the same time i feel like um if you're if you're gonna do the common thing I use air quotes as common, like the thing that happens with frequency, just, you know, no, no, know, know some things, think about some stuff. Uh, the first one, the old almighty classic is the bathroom. Clean the mirror. Thank you. <laughs> Not asking for the world here, but yeah. Like so many people take a picture in a mirror in the bathroom with like, a, like, you know, in front of the vanity. So the vanity is where your sink is. And it usually has a bunch of stuff around it. And the mirror tends to go all the way down to that. And so there's a lot of splashback. So it's from washing your hands. It's from brushing your teeth. Um, for some of you out there, I'm just going to call it out. I don't know if you're like jerking it and like trying to get it into the sink. Because it kind of looks like it goes on the mirror. They're just washing their hands. That's all. Sure. <laughs> Clean that shit up. I just really you know, can get sounding Windex uh, uh, equivalent generic products too that work just as well. Right. I just realized it sounds like an Altido shade episode because I'm just old man ranting at the moment. But the. <laughs> The thing is, is like, oh, like it doesn't take that much here. So here's an interesting thing that people might not realize. If you take a hot shower or maybe a hot bath and you keep your bathroom door closed and you don't have the fan on, 
typically your mirror fogs over. And you can use that as a moment to kind of clean your mirror a little bit. Just take your towel that's clean, hopefully, (laughs) you know, and wipe down the mirror. It'll take a lot of that stuff away. I'm not I'm not asking for a immaculate streak free finish. But come on, you know, I would say related to that crop your photos. I I don't need to see the actual sink basin. (laughs) All right. Well, I was going to say that was going to be another point, right, about the bathroom. <laughs> like, although I will say this, if you're going to leave that in there, just realize that some of us are paying attention. What brand of toothpaste do you use? What is your deodorant? Like, does your toothbrush look like it's ever been replaced? Especially if you're out of the gates. I don't think you're too far off, Jeff. I honestly don't. Why do you think the best answer when it came to, to, to the question of uh, who is the person you most want to have uh, sex with um, was answered by uh, Sterling and Jeffrey? A uh, Yoko Ono to see the apartment. <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah. And it- Related to that, I, I just uh, I think a lot of the uh, if you're taking a selfie in the bathroom, you're, you're probably a not doing a selfie. You're probably doing a regular reflection picture from the mirror as I drop my phone. Uh, <laughs> but the other part you can do is crop it, uh, aim it properly. Try not to get the nasty laundry that's sitting on the floor. <laughs> that sort Pose your shot. Yes. Just a little bit of composition. It doesn't have to be immaculate artistic uh, quality, but, you know. Well, and and so I feel a little torn about, like, the concept of, like, people cleaning up their spaces for the sake of taking a picture. Because there is a part of me that's like, I want you to be genuine about your home space. So if you are in your home and you're taking a picture and you're in the bathroom... And you've got like one leg up on the vanity or the wall or the toilet or whatever. Cause like you want to show off that sweet, sweet unglazed donut hole. Here's the thing. Oh, stop it, Tony. You're acting all virginal over there. So I'm just laughing. (laughs) But here's the thing. It's like (laughs) you're saying it. (laughs) But here's the thing. I'm like, I feel a little torn because I'm like, if you've got a pile of dirty clothes in your bathroom. And that's the reality of your life. A part of me kind of wants to know that because if like you clean up the space and then I come over and that's not what your home space looks like, I'm going to feel a little duped. And there's a part of me that thinks I can forgive certain things. And and let's be realistic here. What, What am I expecting to get out of this? Like if I'm expecting seven minutes of fun then I'm not making a big investment. I'm not looking for long-term anything. So I'm not sure how much that matters. You know, I, so you, I think some people would be willing to forgive certain things. However, there comes a point where you have a breaking. You're like, uh, no, that's, that's not, that's not cool. That's not good for me. That's not happening. And it depends on what the type of picture is. If it's your profile picture, take the time. But if it's a candid shot, you're sending to somebody saying, Hey, here's the, new underwear I bought. I, I'm all for that. Well, no, and, and you bring up a good point. Like the timeliness is also a factor. And I think that's what people will probably debate or, or use as a rebuttal to say to us, like, well, like who has the time to spend blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, it doesn't take that much to prepare the space around you, especially when it's your space. Especially when you can control what is viewable. It doesn't mean you have to like completely clean up everything in your bathroom. Just move some stuff out of the way and just compose the shot a little bit. It takes all like two, three seconds. Right. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, cause if you're a person who likes variety, so be it. I'm not sure everyone needs to see the 20 bottles of shampoo and conditioner in the shower, but Maybe that works for some people. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah. So like, I mean, the bathroom, I think the I think the mirror is the biggest culprit. And I and I agree, like whether although I will say this, Tony, like I feel like everything that includes you in the picture is a selfie, whether it's planned or impromptu or yeah. whatever. And I'm only saying that because to me, like that's how it, how I view it. Like when I see people posting pictures, I'm like, um, if they're not in it, then it's not a selfie. And if they're in it, then it's a selfie, I guess, is my simplicity of that that concept. Um, so the reason I, I mentioned that is because, like, for example, I have an Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. And it, I can remotely trigger the picture being taken. So is that technically a selfie or not? Usually I try to set it up to be one. Right. But I could see where that might just be a candid moment. Well, no, but you bring up an excellent point. So, like, there's there's devices that you can use. Um, there are – I don't think – it must be Bluetooth. I don't think they're infrared. Um, like, fobs. Yeah, like, clickers that you can use with an app that will, like, work with your phone or your camera or an app or something. I kind of like using the watch. Right. And so if you have the, if you have the Apple system, definitively you can use an Apple Watch – to trigger the camera, um, you can do a delay. A delay can be an amazing thing to help you in taking pictures, um, whether it's a selfie or not, because uh, like that's one of the biggest benefits, and and that's what I think um, has been so beneficial for some people. Like I think of Woofer, like a decade plus of pictures posting online. Um, not all of them are necessarily sexy, but like their shots and sometimes they are edited because there's things that are happening within them. Like it's impossible for Woofer to be in four places at once. At least I haven't seen it happen in real life. So therefore I'm calling it not possible. Um, but it is in the composed shot, so to speak. So there's, there's a, there's a little bit of editing going on, but also obviously a timer element cause they're not in the shot. And I used to wonder about that for a couple of years. I was like, how do they get away with this? But then it occurred to me, it's like, they're just parking the camera or the phone or whatever. Yep. And just taking a picture, merging or taking merging several pictures, and right, very true. Back in the film days, might have been like double, triple exposures. Yeah. Um, and speaking of the remotes, if you want them, they'll work on pretty much any of the phone systems, yeah, uh, Android or iOS, and they're usually five bucks or less. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an incredibly cost-effective investment to make in addition to now, I think pretty much all the apps in terms of like the camera itself. I don't know about the platforms. Like I don't want to speak for like Instagram and TikTok and these different things, like whether or not any of those have the ability to do a delay, but the fact that you can actually like have a timer delay to when it actually think, takes the image, I think, I think most is of really them big. Are just integrating the actual camera in the phone. So whatever features your phone has, what, <laughs> What Instagram and Facebook and all those social media what's it? No, I, I agree. Did did said in the live chat, as we can forgive clothes on the floor, but if your bathroom is dirty, I'm talking black mold, brown floor, yellow stains, please don't do it. <laughs> I think that's fair, but there's a part of me that's like, I I understood the please don't do it, but I'm like, please clean it. Like just take care of it. Pay for and again, a maid, a cleaning the shot. service. Just make sure that's not in the shot. Uh, that's true. I mean, you can take the wider shot and as Tony said, crop it. Crop it in. Yeah. And a lot of and a lot of like the photography apps, especially we're mostly talking about from cell phones because we're talking about selfies. Like they give you all the different compositional like ratios. You know, so you can change it around and it doesn't have to be like if you take it in landscape, you can court, sort of make it a portrait depending on what the the circumstances are. And you can also get uh, grid lines and uh, exposure levels and all of those fun things. Yeah. Try and make it a little better. If you want to get into the nitty gritty of that. But... <laughs> yeah. If you're like um, being too lazy for any of that, that shit, then that's fine. <laughs> Okay, so I don't want to beat up on the bathroom too much. Uh, next up, bedroom. Oh, God. <laughs> Here's my thing about a bedroom. Just, I, I don't understand 
I, I mean, maybe we live in such a cultural time now that people are very much like, this is my life. This is my authenticity. This is this is the reality of it. But there's a part of me that's like, I don't. Maybe I'm just too like nitpicky. I'm like, really, really, really. <laughs> like, do you need to have all those empty bottles of soda on your nightstand? Eh. <laughs> like, just put them in the trash. Like. We're in the recycling, like, you know, be nice to Mother Nature, <laughs> be kind to planet Earth a little bit, like just little things like that sometimes, you know, because I, I get it. Like, not everyone is Martha Stewart. Not everyone has a pristine home environment that looks like Architectural Digest is going to roll in at any moment and take some video or some photographs. I get that. But, um, you know, at the same time, I'm also like. I think there could be alluring things about a bedroom as a setup and yet at the same time realize that like you're represent, you're kind of showing more than what I think it's a big thing for me about these selfies, especially in the home. You are representing a more about your life than just whatever you're showing. And and I guess part of it is, is the purpose of why are you taking a picture in the bedroom? If if you're taking a picture of you in bed, for example, that's going to okay. be different than if you're taking it in front of the mirror again. Or in front of the wardrobe or whatever. Right. Um, and I think some people try to like be artistic with these sexy selfies, but they don't quite realize how they look or what like how it doesn't go exactly. I also think that like we get um I don't want to say misled. I think we get we we take on a personal challenge because we're like, oh, somebody has this like amazing shot from above their bed. And you're like, how did they do that? And then you like might be able to put the pieces together or you hear that what they did was that they attached their phone to a blade of their ceiling fan mm -hmm. and then like, you know, did a did a time delay or remote or something like that. Um, and that can work. But it's not as easy as you might think it isn't just simply saying it. Uh, and I'm going to say it like that just because. uh what you might not realize, and I'm thinking about with a ceiling fan, is that it moves, even yeah. when it's not on. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it's all fine and dandy that you could figure out, like, how to use rubber bands or whatever, and, like, put the phone on the underside of a, you know, a blade. But the thing is, like, it will have natural momentum and it will probably rotate and move. <laughs> so that might make it a little tricky. Ah, uh, then you just crop and re reorient it. Mm, that's true. But a selfie stick is actually a very useful thing in that case. All right. So let's talk. Yeah, let's talk about selfie sticks. Um, are they still relevant? Do we see people using them as much? I felt like there was this whole uh, like overwhelming thing where it seemed like everybody had one. And I was like, really? Do we all need to carry one of those around with us all the Game time? Very meme. So I, I have one that is both a uh, uh, stabilizer, so it, it will track your motion, et cetera, and try and stabilize it. Uh, it acts as a mini tripod. It acts as a uh, Bluetooth, so I can trigger the remote mm. remotely to start the picture. Um, it, it's got a whole bunch of functions that are built in. It also acts as a battery, and it was like $20. So I would say have one with you because they're very handy to have. <laughs> wow. But... Uh, yeah, I don't think they're necessarily useful. What I get the most use out of mine is stabilization, like being able to hold the camera without trying to hold the brick like this. If I can have a, a cylinder that I hold onto, it's a whole lot easier and more stable. You know, it's funny because I have one uh, here somewhere buried in the office. I bought a... Oh. Gimbal? Gimbal, like... Is that, I think that's what they're called, like that that allows you to basically hold the camera or in this case, the yeah. phone steady, like while moving around or whatever. I paid a pretty. Pay and for it. I, was like, the time I was like, oh, this is to like take when I go on vacation and do some things like and I and I agree with you, Tony, like the whole concept was is that like, you know, like it'll it'll be much smoother motion as opposed to like, you know. 
herky jerky body movement stuff. Um, but I also didn't use it as much as I thought I would. So I'm like, hmm, yeah, note to self, be careful about your investment. Well, and it's one of those, if you have one, you don't need to have 10 of them. Just pick the one that does what you need it to. Well, that's why I've listened to you rattle off all the features. And I'm like, oh, sure, yours does all those things. But to be <laughs> fair, I bought mine like probably uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm one of those, but if no, I can I get agree. something that does all of it, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, so. and I think that's fair. No, I do think that um, selfie sticks can be good for certain things, like um, Din Din said in the live chat, like for group picks. So, like if there's going to be a couple of people together, um, like like if you want to, if you and your partner or partners are um, wanting to be able to take a picture, that's one way that you can do that without having someone miss being in the shot. But that's also a thing to be aware of is that, like, you can have someone else take the picture. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. I realize that kind of breaks the rule of the selfie concept maybe in a way. But, you know, if if there's an, an additional person, that's all right. And sometimes there are people who are willing to be the photographer because either they have an eye for it, a knack for it, or maybe they don't really want to be in the photo. And that's okay, too. And likewise, telling them to hit the shutter button is a uh, kind of still a selfie. <laughs> Correct. Like telling them, you know, when you want them to to do that particular thing. Uh, in that case, I, I think it goes without saying. Um, one of the things to realize is that, like, you should probably clean the camera lens. Like, <laughs> that should be just a given rule. <laughs> It should, but I think some people don't realize like how dirty camera lenses get, whether it be front facing or rear facing, especially on a phone. Um, when it comes to that, it also can be a little difficult when you're doing a selfie to use the focus. Because you focus on a lot of devices requires like, especially on a cell phone, tapping the screen for where you want the focus to be. And I just realized with the selfie stick, that'll probably not be possible because the selfie stick, the whole intention is to like have the length to be able to get the the image that you want. Um, so yeah, that could that could pose a challenge. You could do it with the Apple Watch though. Oh really? I didn't yep. know that. You can refocus and zoom and do all of that preview. Okay. It's one of the reasons. One of the reasons I like it for doing selfie and that style of photo. Is because you can actually get a preview, see what it's going to look like before you start the picture. Yeah. No, I can I can understand that. So yeah, um, with the bedroom, I feel like the what people maybe not realize is again like because it, it's in your home, you're revealing things about you and your personality, your life. Um, most of us have things up in our home or out visible in our home that are like the stuff that we're interested in. And you might not realize also that there's things like family photos, um, you know, and that they may not necessarily have ever thought that their Olin Mills photograph or whatever was going to be, you know, in the shot of you showing off how flexible you are. <laughs> um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to those things, uh, go ahead. The other one I'd add is light. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody, when they shoot photos under lights and that'll basically wash out everything and makes it look terribly grainy, et cetera. The more light you can have, the better off you're going to get. I would agree. I think what people don't realize is like, like with us for like podcasting, like I have a light ring like right now behind my camera and I got that several years ago because I didn't realize how dark things were. I know with Damon, he had the same revelation a couple of years ago, a year ago, two years ago. Um, he didn't realize that how much, how significant a light ring can be in terms of that. If you now more than ever, if you see, oh, I'm going to say amateur adult film being made, um, you'll see the light stands. 
um, sometimes with diffusers or whatever. But you'll realize that, like, in order to be able to see what's happening, the light is needed. Otherwise, it will be rather dark and it isn't very easy to see. And back in the era of doing porn, et cetera, you, when you had your physical video cameras, they usually had larger sensors. As you go to cell phones, the sensors get smaller and smaller. You need more light. Like right here, I, I've got four lights on me right here. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah, I've got that one, two that pivot, that give a color, as well as one more spot. But this is also the desk. I'm like for, for, for my shaded window. But I also use this for work for video conference all day long. So mm. this situation is the same setup. Right. Well, that's fair. Not that I'm taking a, a private selfies from this location, but. <laughs> no, but you do have the. Well, I was going to say, but you do have the equipment available. Like, so if you needed to, you could, like, theoretically have something. And I think that's another thing that people don't realize is, like, there's a lot of convenience and portability with, like, accessories in terms of, like, lights and, and those kind of things that you could um, be helpful. I mean, now they make really powerful, like, little boxes um, that are basically all LED. And then you can adjust the warmth or the blue, so to speak, of that, even uh, the color in that case. Yeah. I was going to try and pull one of them down, but it's not going to come loose. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, I think that, that folks don't quite realize that that's a, a thing. Is and the other one is light, just... Jeff? Nice. Even, is that the one that we got it, you? Yeah. Even when I adjust the warmth, it still is a little harsh in my eyes. I will say that is something that people probably don't realize. Um, in order to have probably your optimal light, it's going to be brighter than what you think you need. Um, I know like when I was working during the pandemic, in this office space um, at my other desk. And like, I got a light specifically for that. I have a, I have a smaller ring light. Um, like I had to get a certain intensity right now at my office at work, uh, because sometimes we do video calls and we're on uh, camera. I intentionally have, it's not a ring. I have a light bar that's like literally right behind um, the webcam behind sort of to the side of it. And intentionally make sure that like it's on when the, the camera's on. Do I need to have it on? Technically, no. But I like the fact that it just adds a little bit of enough of uh, light that it kind of makes things easier in terms of like when people are seeing me. Not that I'm taking sexy selfies at work, but still, the, the principle applies. And it's more helpful for video than, than still photos because still photos, you can always edit them and at least get something out of it. But for video, you're pretty much kind of stuck. True. Very true. Um, all right. Other spaces. Uh, this is a, another big popular one. The gym or a workout space. Yes. There Tony. be mindful. I was going to say there be mindful because not all gyms allow it. Okay. Well, that, that brings up a good point. Like know what the policy is of. The location that you're at, like, you know, don't piss off the staff or the management or the ownership or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I, my thing about that is I think people don't realize, well, and I think sometimes it's not all people that like, there are other people also there in the gym. Maybe they didn't want to be in your, you know, your picture, especially if you're like trying to post, you know, some, some thoughtness and, you know, so you kind of hike your shorts up a little bit and show off your package because you're seated on the bench or whatever, you know, it's like, but then there's somebody in the background, like lifting weights. It's like, they may not necessarily want to be a part of that. So keep that in mind. I guess pay attention to your surroundings um, in that case. And likewise, if you're doing it in the locker room, for example, be mm -hmm. careful of sometimes there's policies against taking pictures in there. Sometimes 
you can if it's not including other people it kind of depends on what is acceptable right and i think that's fair like years ago when uh friends of mine and i went to uh planet fitness locally like on the regular we were going like two three days a week um i remember there's a whole i have a whole series of them like they weren't sexy selfies but it was just like us goofing because we were like getting ready or leaving or whatever and it was one of those like we were just posting and being like did another workout like you know um kind of thing but we were always very intentionally like making sure there was no one else that was going to be in the picture or whatever and certainly not somebody who was in the midst of changing um while that can be fun again (laughs) Consent is sexy, yes. so you need to like talk to people ahead of time and make sure you get that from them. Um, but I agree with you. Like, I, I think the the knowing what the policies are um, is a big piece of it, and that goes back to well. It, so this is my there were kind of two broad categories, and this kind of falls into public, not private. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a gym or a locker room is a public space, but it's not private. And by that, I mean, like, the gym or the locker room is semi-private. Um, like, the shower area, again, like, public, but not private. So, like, you might think it's cute to, like, take a picture of you, like, toweling off or whatever. But, again, like, be aware of your surroundings, who's around you, and, and that kind of stuff. If you're taking the picture of you toweling off and you have to expose yourself to the entire gym, there's probably a, a reason you shouldn't do that <laughs> and and again like what is the space is that i mean is that a part of the culture if you're in a bathhouse that might be much more an acceptable kind of area to to do that type of thing um but you know keep that in mind and most likely they're gonna have something posted especially if it becomes a nuisance issue um when it comes to those things um also, the like, I don't know why, and and it's not so much, I guess I want to say, like, a still image, it's more video. Um, stairwells seem to be a, a, a bit of a thing, and I get it, like, there's some kind of excitement about the fact that you might get caught. But that excitement about might you might get caught is also probably breaching, like, <laughs> the the space for someone else, um, and them not consenting. Mm-hmm. It, anytime you're dealing with public situations, you're you're always going to have the potential to offend someone, uh, potential for exposure of your own bits, uh, <laughs> right. As well as there's going to be some sort of risk there. Um, if you're doing it at a run in a stairwell, you're probably not risking as much as you are if you're on vacation in a stairwell. <laughs> right. So, like, and here's an example of what I would consider probably public but private, which might sound a little strange to say, like, because you, because you, this is what made me think of it, Tony, is when you said about a stall. So, like, if you're in a bathroom stall by yourself, one can presume to a certain degree that even though this is a public space, it's also private. Like it's you presumably with a closed door. There's not much else. Although if you're not aware, there's a whole like genre of videos out there of people like filming other people doing things in bathroom stalls. Um, So just keep that in mind. Uh, You know, that whole non-consensual gray area type situation. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that, like, it, it, again, it's your surroundings, being aware of what that, uh, what's happening and what's taking place. Also, I'm not, I'm not going to kink shame, but I think there's a, a time and a place for certain things. And if you're posting this more for a broader audience, you might want to keep that in mind. Um, and the reason I say that is, I feel like some people feel empowered because they're like, oh, this is something that I'm into and they want to share that. And I can understand that. But you also have to realize if this isn't something that people know about you or is 
um, I don't know how to say this, uh, more kind of in the middle road of what people are sharing or posting that that might be unwanted and people might say things they might, you know, end up commenting, um, about that. And that I think is, I don't want to say fair game, but I think that's understandable, especially if it's not something they were expecting because they're not the intended audience per se for that particular thing. And that goes back to knowing what it is you're intending to do with the selfie or the picture. Right. Um, because I feel like sometimes people, they, I, 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 again, I just don't think that they're taking in their immediate environment when they're going to take that particular image, whatever that may be, um, in that place at that time, and realize what that. I'll, go ahead. I, I would say it also depends on what you're taking pictures of. So, like, if there's some sort of new uniform or gear or something that is publicly acceptable. I don't see as much of an issue in doing that in public. Um, now, if you're wearing uh, your gym shorts that are three sizes too small to the gym, that might be a, <laughs> a bit more of a challenge. But if you're wearing off the new sexy thing that you just bought, you're probably safer on that. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, and, as a and, sports gear person <laughs> no you don't say i know <laughs> i'll do a lot of outdoor pictures but usually in season for example so that it doesn't get a lot of interest well and that brings up an interesting point because you've you've done uh selfies in the past is there anything when you're taking a selfie that you think about like in terms of the location who might see you that kind of stuff so the who might see me is usually uh, a factor of like where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So like if, if on a road trip, for example, I'm taking a quick picture at the uh, 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 rest stop that I'm stopping at, I, I'll usually take it outside. I won't take it in the bathroom <laughs> as, as an example. Right. Um, but at the same time, if you're showing off your underwear, you're probably going to do that in a stall versus out in the front of the rest stop. Uh, right. Right. So it all depends on what it is that you're aiming for. Right. Like, I mean, I've seen some people who have taken pictures like kind of as a selfie to be a little flirty or to show off that like they're standing in a urinal and they have their like jeans or their pants down to show from the behind that they're wearing a jock strap. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I get it. That can be sexy. There is a part of me though. That's also like is anybody else in the room when you did that, like, <laughs> Because, you know, I'm not complaining, but I'm also like, I hope, you know, that that wasn't a bother for, for somebody else. Uh, and I might be one of the few people that, you know, thinks about or considers that. Does it take very long to take a picture? No, but you do have to kind of like think ahead a little bit about like setting things up and, you know, be able to take the picture. And there's, there's also the like, do you turn the flash on? Because if you're facing away from the camera, the flash would be an indicator that it went off, but at the same time, it will also indicate to everyone else it went off. True. Very true. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I think, um, so another kind of area that I'm thinking about that's uh, public, not private, would be a natural setting. So, like, at a city park, out in the woods, on a hiking trail, um in a parking lot um again all of those things are probably about the flirty nature of the space that you're in um especially if it's a cruisy area is mostly what those things were that i was referencing um my first thought is like those also tend to have a lot of anonymity to them. And by that, I mean people who are going there that aren't expecting to be captured, on, you know, in an image or in a video. Um, and if they do, like, they should probably be made aware, you know, that you're attempting to to have to capture that in some fashion. Um, I'm always intrigued by people who have the person they're with be the photographer. So like if you're the person who's like 
go into, you know, out in the woods on a cruising hiking trail and you're looking to blow some guys or you really get off on Bukaki and having, you know, guys just all over your face. It's not really all that practical, in my opinion, if you're doing that thing and trying to take the picture or the video. So invariably, you're going to need some help. <laughs> it always helps to have a lookout, too. True. <laughs> right. Like a spotter. Yep. Um, but I know that, like, sometimes people will be willing to help with that process as the one who's, like, because they're, cause they're nothing identifiable about them is going to be in the shot, so to speak. No pun intended. Um, so, but I guess my feeling on it is if you're going to be the one that's taking the video or the picture, hopefully if you've listened this far or watched and paid attention to the things we've already discussed, like composure, lighting, focus, like these things will help and benefit the person who wants this to be taken because I could see the frustration of like handing your phone or whatever over to somebody and then afterwards going back and looking and being like, no, this is usable. <laughs> I'll also keep in mind that a lot of the times when these pictures are taken and this video is taken, there isn't a lot of planning. Uh, so your, your rendezvous in the, the park, for example, uh, <laughs> They're, they're, you're probably not bringing out your rig of lights with you to make sure everything is lit properly. <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to go with what you have available at that time. No, that's fair. That's fair. I was just thinking, like, I, I feel like some people are like, yeah, yeah like they'll, they'll be willing. Mostly guys, are, I guess, in this scenario are willing to, like, take the camera, take the phone. But then they're not really paying attention. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like they don't realize that I like we have a lot of footage of the ground, of the sky, of the tree over there. Like, you know, like like they're not, you know, paying attention. And you're just kind of like, where that's, that's not editing helpful. comes in. <laughs> True. But it also probably makes it difficult if like that's most of the footage, especially if it's video and you're just like, <laughs> damn it. You'll just have to remake it. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> You have to do it all over again. Is it why or, having, having some visual remote such as the app? I'm not sure if other watches do it for like Android Watch or whatever it's called. Yeah, it has it where you can set up the camera and then look at what the camera is seeing through here and then kind of compose a shot and then just like stick the phone over there, go do your thing over here, just let it record. And for a lot of those type of situations, you're probably even looking at a GoPro or something like that, where you're going to have an app on your phone. Because if you're if you're taking the in the woods shot, you're probably mounting the camera to something. So probably isn't your cell phone. Well, so that brings up a good point. I, Tony, do you have much experience with GoPros? Because I don't. I'm, I know of them, but I don't own one or have never really used one. The specific GoPros? No, I don't. But I have a whole bunch of disposable like uh, little cameras. Okay. Um, I don't know about now. Weren't GoPros originally like loading to a, a local drive of some kind, like a, a disc or card or whatever? Yeah, usually just an SD card local, but normally a lot of them have, these days at least, uh, some sort of Wi Fi connections so that you could sync it up to your phone and control it as well as position it, see what its uh, angle is, see what the uh, messages that you're getting on it, that sort of a thing. Okay. That's fair. They've gotten really advanced. I, well, I was going to say, I imagine they do quite a bit now compared to when they first came out. Um, in that case. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think there's lots of options to consider when it, when it comes to that stuff. Um, I was going to say something else and I forgot what it was. <laughs> I think the big takeaways are Think, you know, you don't have to plan far ahead. You don't have to do a lot of planning. Just consider the immediacy of your environment um, and what is going to be within that particular image or video, if it's not a still image. Um, 
And if that's what you want, or if that's what you think people will find appealing or interesting, um, I get it. Sometimes it's not easy, especially if it's a little spontaneous. Um, I'm thinking like, especially in terms of like outdoors things like that, the, that the distance might be a bit of an issue. Um, again, there's a lot of like software that's available now that should hopefully be able to help a little bit with that in terms of like cropping or, you know, changing things slightly as best as possible. But there comes a point where the, even the technology can't fix it all. Um, in that case. Just be mindful. There's, yeah. And there's two other scenarios I would suggest. There's mm-hmm. if you're taking pictures in somebody else's space. So like if you're in somebody else's home taking pictures, uh, be mindful of what is around you. Again, like you mentioned, family photos, things like that. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is have somebody else's ex-wife be in your penis photo. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, mom and dad's urns in the background on the mantle. I mean, maybe you don't care. Hard to say. But likewise, um, the other spot I was going to suggest was uh, um, like play areas. So dungeon spaces. Mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned bathhouses before, but uh, even just campsites, things like that, where where you're actively involved. Um, and, And those type of locations again kind of get because there's more than one person usually involved so like if you're doing your own personal dungeon at home you you control what images you're taking there but also recognize that everybody can see all your crap (laughs) right well it's interesting that you say that because i think this become very popular recently that that people have slings in their homes Mm -hmm. and so they will set up cameras um in the corners or directly above or like off to the side. Um, understandably, a lot of this is for video that they're probably posting to a pay for access service. Um, you know, or posting it for free. Uh, but invariably, you know, they they capture, you know, an, an image from that video, um, which I guess could theoretically still be a selfie in some definition. Um, yeah. To make the thumbnail image or whatever that may be. But I agree with you. Like they kind of don't realize what's um, necessarily in the background when it comes to that. Um, you know, you might inadver- inadvertently not realize that your kids' toys are like visible um, on the floor or something of that sort. So those are just little I, things probably to be aware of. Yeah, I was thinking more of the like Bad Dragon collection. Uh- <laughs> Unless you want to share that. Well, I- I was just gonna say I know people that would be willing to to brag and show off their their collection. So I don't I don't know if there's much about that that they don't want seen. Yeah, so maybe maybe it's there because you're doing a sequence of shots with using the bad drink. Oh yeah, toys. and that's where you could have a selfie still because you could be in the sling using the toys on yourself, whether it's pictures or video. Yeah, I agree. Um, And if you happen to see, as we wrap up, I want to say this. If you happen to see uh, an image or video that you really like and you're not sure how they how they composed it, how they put it together, how they set it up, ask them, you know, like uh, because I've been intrigued. Not that I want to make one, but I've been intrigued by when like the flesh jack, you know, items came on the scene predominantly. I'm very intrigued by people who are like doing kind of sort of internal camera like stuff. And I'm like, how do you do do that? Like, I know it's possible, but I'm like, but I also don't want to do it. So I haven't asked because I'm like, I'm not that curious, but I use that as an example of like, if you want to know, like you, you can ask them and be like, Hey, how did you, you know, capture that particular image or whatever they did. So, and hopefully they will be nice and they'll probably take it a little bit as like, you know, some flattery and be like, Oh yeah. Like, thank you. Like, you know, I appreciate that you asked about that or this is, this is, this is what it was. And and they might surprise you and they'll be like, Oh my God, this was such a fucking pain in the ass. This was like 200 shots. It took an hour, like (laughs) blah, 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 you know? And then you'd be like, Oh, okay. So that's not something probably to try. So I have a, a, 
personally, I, I think a lot of selfies and uh, those type of pictures that you're distributing online, uh, really, it's going to be your choice of what you like to, to pose it into, etc. So you're going to probably show off your interests. You're going to show off what what assets you have that you want to advertise, <laughs> whether physical or <laughs> knowledge or toy based. Um, right. And uh, so I, I think a lot of it there is this context that that's going right. to define what you do. Um, now, the yeah. other one I... is like events. If you go mm -hmm. to a run, for example, there's a totally different set of rules there. Yeah, I, I think that folks don't realize like when you're in a in a event space and there's a crowd or there's other folks around, like not necessarily everyone's willing to do that. Some events go to the standard of like creating um, imaging communication, I guess is the best way to phrase it. So it's a wristband. It's a sticker on a badge. Like there's something that notates or indicates. And it's mostly meant for photographers of the event to know who does not does not want their likeness or their image, you know, uh, to be captured. But if you see that that's a thing, especially you'll probably be asked upon check-in, like what your preference is, or it was a part of the registration. And you notice that there's like different colored wristbands or badges or stickers on badges or whatever. Like that's a key indication that if you're trying to take a picture in a, in a space that some people might not want that, um, and to pay attention to that once you have the picture to look at it and see if anybody has that designation, if there's a way you can somehow kind of crop or edit the image so that way they're not visible in it, if that's what their desire was. And while it doesn't reach into the selfies and like personal pictures, uh, similar things can be said for the event. So, for example, I talked about having just come from camp. We have a mm -hmm. no, photo no photography policy. There's very very limited times and when people can do their own photography. Um, mm -hmm. but, but we have uh, assigned photographers that go around and take pictures that individuals don't get, but the yearbook that we produce does get all of them. Mm. So That's as nice. a result, we capture what's going on at the event, but we know that it's never going to go outside the doors. Interesting. Hmm. And I, this year was interesting because I got to be one of the photographers because uh, we had two photographers who were assigned who were both uh, plane delayed. So my Aww. pup and I got to, to fill in and help uh, take some other pictures. But it was very awkward because people didn't know that we were taking pictures. And so we had to get badges and everything and calm mm -hmm. people down when they saw that the non-normal photographers were there. Right. Well, right. And that would be another key thing to be aware of is that some people are looking for, especially at events, like you're saying, like they're looking for somebody who has press or media or photographer, like something that designates them as that. Um, and if you're not that individual, um, you know, if, if it's a selfie, that's kind of one thing. But to take picture of somebody else or a scene or whatever, you probably need to ask ahead of time and make sure. And I get it. Like you're at an event, you see this thing the situation, this person or people, it's hot. Like you really think like it's, you know, something that you want to be able to reflect upon, masturbate to, whatever. And, <laughs> you know, you want to have that, you know, for your own records or whatever. But again, especially if it's not you, you need to know what the, the lay of the land is and what the rules are when it comes to that. And video is a, is a new area there. We're still trying to figure out what we're doing with video. So... Yeah. And I think that's fair um, when it comes to the, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anything else as we wrap up, gentlemen, as final thoughts? To me, I, I think people should put more thought into their selfies. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times it's real easy to just take a quick picture and not think about it. But my recommendation is take the picture, look at it. What did you do wrong? And then retake it just right there. It takes another 15 seconds, but you're going to end up with a better image if you take that one chance to reflect. Right. Well, and, and I think, um, God, what was that movie that we, that we just had come out this past year and Damon and I'm aligned. Oh, bros. Did you see that Tony? No, I did not. Okay. Well, in the movie, uh, one of the characters tries to take selfies 
it's so stupid it's a comedy it's meant to be it's meant to be stupid and funny but it's it's the whole ilk of like there's something about mary like you know these kind of goofy romantic comedies or whatever but he's like you know trying to um you know hit up and have a hookup and he's on an app and the person's like you know oh i'm only a top and blah 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 and like so you know as a bottom he's being kind of I don't want to say pressured, but the expectation is that he's going to take a picture of his butthole. And so it's really funny how he like goes through this whole comedic like montage of him trying to figure out how to take a picture of his ass, um, you know, and, and get the lighting right. And then like, and I think there's a moment where he like shaves his ass or something like anyways, it's <laughs> like, there's a part of me that's like, okay, this is stupid. I get it. It's funny. It's also stupid. But I also realize, like, it's based on truth. Like, people will go through all like, like these gymnastics, like all this stuff to just like take a picture, like to send to somebody. And I agree with you. Like, if it's not a good picture, like, you know, like it doesn't take that much effort, hopefully, to quickly turn around and take another picture. Um, but I think that's also another thing that we face in today's culture is people are just like, you know. They, it's very much the immediacy, and so they like try to hurry up and take a picture, and then they just send it, whether it's good or not. <laughs> True. So, I think all of that was uh, brought up in a, a nice music video for Whole Pick. As Willem, I believe, did that. Uh, sounding familiar? I don't think I've seen it though. Oh, I'll have to find it and send it your way. Nice. It's a parody, but it it, yes. uh, it pretty much captures all of the fun of trying to figure out how to get a good whole pick. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Well, with that, I think we're ready to, to wrap up this titillating and educational episode. <laughs> We can't hear you, Jeff. You're muted. <laughs> I set the cough switch and muted. It's only fair because you guys have done it all over and over again. <laughs> if you take selfies, send them our way. You can do that in plenty of ways. You can do that at CubsOutLoud.com. Leave a comment on the blog. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 361- Two six five eight two five five. That's three six one. See you all talk. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. at comes out on the appropriate place of URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the videos. You can also join our entourage chat at bitly slash telegram dash col, or subscribe to our Google Calendar at bitly slash calendar dash col to find out when we're planning on recording these shows. You can also get various equipment such as a made to be or one of our next gen cell anniversary celebration shirts or consented my foreplay or flexibility for accessibility all at zazzle zazzle.com slash comes out loud some of those designs that were designed by smashy you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud you follow us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, any podcasting platform. Please rate us, review us there. More than, gets us higher in the algorithm, which means more people find us. And you can share everything. And you can find me sometimes on the internet as box, box, bumpy box, web box, something or other. Gary? You can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. Uh, on Twitter, I do have an alt account, Gabra73XXX. Don't get it twisted. It's mostly about things that I love, not about me specifically. If people would like to get in touch with you, Tony, where would they find you? Uh, Cubs is on Twitter uh, and then uh, Facebook, just as me. <laughs> All right. and, and with that, take it out, everybody. Have a good one, guys.